Hey everybody, this is Tom Beard, and I wanted to show you some of the features of the new shader I made um, this last week called Simply Upscaled. Here it is on default settings. It's made to be a high performance shader. If we crank this up, um, it does really well. Like it <laughs> the main feature that it's named for is it has texture upscaling. That's from the CTM Pomfix shader, which includes both, um, and you see it doesn't affect performance that much. Uh, crisp upscaling like this um, and it's got a distance control in case it does have performance impact like I said it doesn't seem to so let's pump that up to keep the uh, to look the same um, and it also has bilinear filtering and stuff like that for more um, realistic packs and it lists what they are there I recommend one for bilinear two is like a adaptive contrast and then three and five or two um, crisp filters. Five should be a little faster. And um, they just look a little different how they do things. Like that's five. There's three. And you can adjust like the softness of the blending and everything too. Um, so if you want to adjust a little bit of the pixel edge gone, you could do that with like the bilinear stuff. Let's look at some of the, um, the ways you could adjust the feel, kind of, real quick. Um, by default, it's got border fog and like a soft fog on. Um, there's shadow options and there's some lighting options that can greatly change the feel of it. Um, one of the biggest feelings in lighting would be the sky ambient light. If you turn this down just a little bit, even, um, you get a much darker shader. I'm going to have to do some exposure control and stuff later because right now without this, the sand would get kind of blown out. Like here's what it, <laughs> what it is without it right now. Um, but it's a nice, bright, vibrant shader. So the default is on that one. You can also um, make some adjustments to it if you did uh, the fall off here. If we up that, it makes the shadows a lot darker while still maintaining full brightness everywhere else. And there's also an option to... Well, let's run out of this for a second. I'll, I'll show the um, some shadow options first. Here we can see the, the default is just really crispy pixelated shadows. Um, well, I've got this duck here. I'll show that we also have borders you can put on if you want that cartoon appearance. And they fade in the background so that they uh, don't float up too good, but still kind of look kind of soft. And then for shadows, we've got a default that's crisp. And we've got a bunch of options. We could turn them off. Um, these ones are a basic blur. is number two. It's all stood here. Three is a, a crisp filter where it tries to just kind of blend those pixel edges a little bit. Four is bilinear with a little bit of extra softness for like a pixel ways in. And this is on a really low resolution, so this is like no performance. Um, because it's still pixelated because it's, it's a really low resolution shadow map. Um, Was I doing four is that one? Five is a little bit of a prenumber type of thing where it should do softer shadows the further you get away from something, they'll be softer. Um, I need like a tree casting a shadow later in the day to kind of show that off. These still have some problems where I'm kind of still working on them though. You see the shadows are a little soft on the edge. I'll show these on a higher resolution too and they'll, they'll look a little better. Go ahead and do that now. Apparently I didn't put it on. Here's a little bit of a softness over distance. Uh, 
and number six does the softer shadows too. And then within that, we've got all these extra options. I recommend turning colored shadows off when doing these for now because I haven't done better with them. Um, and if we up the sample count, um, you're going to get a much softer blend on the shadows. So it looks pretty good for only like a 500 or a 1024 shadow map with a blur. And you can make it kind of blur right on the edges a little more too if things are still crisp. But I think that's a good start for just doing these um, today. And another way to kind of change the, the feel of the lighting, um, besides the sky brightness and the fall off, is you can also change the colors of all kinds of things. Um, like here we can switch to an alternate sky color and then it takes the blue from or whatever the sky color is for the ambient light which if we combine that with changing like the sun color to maybe be a little bit more red um, with a little bit less blue like that might kind of balance out and give you a feel that's a little bit more ambient light but like that already is just a different feel um, let's go back, standard, throw back up our texture upscaling, um, like I said we got some borders on, just going for the cartoon look, and the shadows if we wanted them, like five, we'll turn these off now since they're broken, um, and then we've got a, a nice, a nice look that's going to perform very well. <laughs> that's, that's so much better than my other shader that's getting like 10 FPS on Ultra. Um, the main thing that's going to affect this shader for performance, if anything does, is going to be shadow map resolution and um, shadow samples. So you can pump these up to get even softer soft lights. Um, but then we're still at like 500 FPS and you really don't need that over the default. I'll also show the um, PBR support here. So if it's reset and it's this thing right here. I'll show the difference with a pack. We'll use a uh, Patrix since that's the one I usually test with. had a problem loading in there and this is still just on the default mode um, this isn't using the PBR textures we've got two options for that and you can put the tune and stuff and everything on this too if you wanted to um, it's not necessarily gonna look as good but um if we switch to lab PBR texture mode here then we've got a PBR shader um, I'll just put those soft shadows back on Um, and this should perform very well again. So we've got a, a really good high performance um, PBR shader. Let's see. It should do all the things. Like if we grab uh, my favorite block here for showing this, because it's nice and shiny. We get some nice, um, nice reflections both of the sun and the sky. To get, um, just a good feel. So this shader is free on Modrinth and CurseForge. Um, and like I said, it's got PBR because I just wanted it to have 
all the features the shader should have. Um, but the focus is just that it's fast and uh, it's much cleaner than <laughs> my other shader. It's fast and it's not buggy. Um, I'm still going to be working on this, so if anybody has feature requests, you can make them on Discord. Um, I also added feel. Let's see. So if you put lab PBR mode on when you're not using PBR textures, it looks a little ugly. That's why there's a switch. Um, because the PBR mode, by default, um, changes the skylighting in a way that's uh, a lot more dramatic to kind of show off 3D textures. I'm still using my upscaling now when I put it back on. Let's put the two and on too. Let's just go for it. Um, yeah, let me show night real quick. So by default, it gets pretty nice and dark. I didn't put in uh, handheld torches yet. I'll do those with PBR like they're in CT and Pomfix Shader. Um, so that they show up all the normal maps and everything. But I probably won't do the shadow casted ones like they're in the new shader. Because um, this shader probably won't have a bunch of ray tracing stuff. But maybe I'll do that later. That's the kind of thing if you want to see that, like make the request. Um, but on the torchlight here in the nighttime, We've got the option for um, these really dark nights where it'll get like, you can make it absolutely pitch black in the distance if you want. Um, it's a lot darker. It must be like, you know, direct light on that. You can turn on the moonlight too if you want it to just be absolutely horrifying. Like there's the moon brightness. Hopefully this should work. Now my moon brightness and sun brightness slider seems to be broken, so I'll fix those later. Um, oh no, I've got a bug. But I guess you could... There we go. Turn around that way and we have like pitch black darks. And the, um, I'll fix that later. And the torchlight has options that you can um, do custom colors or do two sets of custom colors where it blends between them. So we can have our torches be yellow where they're bright and kind of fade off into like a red. Um, and if you're on Optifine, this also affects the handheld torch. It will affect the handheld torch in Iris when I put that in. I'll do that maybe this week or next week. Um, but it's got a lot of a lot of options to kind of just keep a, a fast, vanilla-friendly feel. Because um, that's what I wanted this shader to be. So if anyone's interested, um, it's here, it's free, it's available. You can see the cave get nice and dark too. Um, and I'll put color grading in another day, but for now, if, it's, if it seems too bright for you, I would say just take the sky ambient light down a little bit and that should uh, I should fix it. I also put in a little thing here to kind of lessen just the brightest brights to keep things fully blown out um, but it still gets close unless you turn on the ambient light in the sky. But that's where this is. Um, The new, the new offering to the time travel beard shader family. Um, <laughs> so hope you all enjoy it, and um, let me know what you think. And uh, I'll, I'll keep working on it. Kind of between doing other things. Oh, that's really dark there. That's kind of
spooky. It's more kind of fun. I got a creeper. Um, but yeah, I hope you all enjoy it. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. I'm going to do some gameplay episodes this week. I keep saying I'm going to start doing them again. I've been bad about actually just playing the game and enjoying it. Um, I'll make water fog look right from outside the water too. Right now it's only when you're in the water. Yeah, everybody have a good week. I'll talk to you soon.